Hello and welcome to my channel on the hook crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style and thank you for dropping by I'm glad you're here I am glad to be back I've been gone for a while I wanted to talk to you all about where I've been and what I've been doing and also to show you a couple of new sweaters that I have on the horizon hopefully they will be completed and the patterns out next week at least one pattern that I know about will be out next week Crystal's going to model that for y'all today. Also later in the program, I'd like to have Joe's video show, and this is a, um, uh, a video of some brand new bags that Joe has to show from Joe for Totes. She is a professional project bag creator. Very, very beautiful work. And sometimes she sends a video to me and I'll play it on my video, usually at the very end, because sometimes the, the audio gets messed up and I try to not let that happen, but sometimes it does. So I'm going to let Joe's video play at the very end. I will also, on Monday, now this is Friday, so on Monday I will be back with my Labor Day show and wearing my uh, America tank and I hope you'll be wearing your America tank as well. I'll be back on Monday and we'll talk about some other things on Monday. But today, I, and we'll, give a, we'll do our giveaway on Monday because that way I can keep with Mondays. And if you want to sign up for the giveaways, I'll show you what we are working on here. This is the Crochet World magazine and this will go out to someone who watched a certain video. And the video is the July Knit Crate Unboxing and that was um, published on August 23rd and I'll put a link to that either maybe at the end of this video I'll put the link to these two videos where you signed up for the Crochet World and also one in which you signed up for the Crochet Surprise which we haven't opened yet but we'll open that on Monday take a look at what's inside if y'all might already know but I would like to show what's in this box and this will be given away on Monday and those two videos that you need to watch in order to sign up for these two beautiful gifts is at the end of the video here so be sure you go out and sign up for those and that way you are in the running to maybe win one of those two gifts so please do that now we'll be doing that later on uh, on Monday so be sure to watch on Monday now what I'd like to do is to talk about what I've been doing for the last 10 days. And this is just real quick, but I wanted to tell you what happened. I had gone down to some property that I own down in Florida, and it was on the Gulf Coast. And when I got there, it was a four-day stay that Mr. On the Hook and I were going to go down and do a few things to the property and uh, check on some other things. So we were down there doing some work and then we realized that this hurricane was on its way so we decided that we would stay a little bit longer and let the hurricane pass well when the hurricane passed it took so long for it to pass we were there 10 days i think the 10th day we drove back it was very traumatic the day we tried to come back which was this monday there were a lot of uh, outer bands that were on the map exactly where we were driving back home and we thought it was just going to be rainy, but it was so bad. The wind was so strong, and the rain was blowing sideways. The car was shaking. There was We couldn't see how to drive, and so we decided, you know what? We're going to turn around and go back. So we had driven an hour, and so we drove an hour back to where we were, and we, we actually had a place to go, so we went there. We unpacked everything, and we stayed two more days, and then we came back on this Wednesday. Well, then I found out that I would probably need to be helping with a family member, um, with a sick family member, so I am not as available as I usually am to my business, which is my crochet business. And I love this very, very much, but in order to do a video, you have to kind of have your wits about you and be able to present yourself on video, and then you have to edit, and then you have to publish, and then you have to type everything out and there's a lot of work that goes into making a video and I love it very very much but I have to have lots of time to do that so today is Friday 
and I hope I can get this out to you on Friday. I'm going to try my very best to get it edited and get it out. I might not have a lot of detail in the description box like I usually do, so that way I can just uh, publish the video. Hopefully I won't have to edit it too much. So that's where I've been for the last 10 days. Now, thank you all so much for your well wishes. I did receive those, and y'all were saying be safe, and we were trying to be safe. And we were safe on the way home, and it was thrilling to be able to have beautiful sunny weather when we drove back. So I really wasn't expecting the hurricane to be so strong and to be so prolific. It was so far out on the east side of the storm, and that is what ended up in the northeast. And I'm so glad that y'all were very, very patient, and thank you for your well wishes. I really appreciate those. It makes me feel so good that uh, somebody's actually looking for my videos. <laughs> so I'm back and hopefully I can get another video out on Monday and that will be our Labor Day. And be sure to wear your America tank for that. Now, this is my newest creation. This is called my Sparkling Summer Sweater. And I really like it. Of course, I like everything that I make because I try to make it all fit. It, it needs to fit. Now, this is the Sparkling Summer Sweater, and the reason I call it that is because I made it from Audine Wools, and this is Twinkle DK. I've shown this many, many times. I've been working on this, seems like forever, but this is made from 80% merino wool and 10% cashmere, 10% Stellina, which is the bling that's in this particular yarn, and I'm going to try to see if I can get that to show up. I think you can see it just a little bit there. There's some Stellina in here. It's not obnoxious, so that's one reason I really like it. It's not obnoxious. It looks really nice made up, and this is hand wash only, lay flat to dry. There are 250 yards on the skein, and I used four skeins to make this. This is my fifth skein, and I did not open this. My fourth skein, I had probably half of it left, so really it took, you know, three and a half skeins to make this, so... That's about eight or 900 yards. That's a conservative estimate. I'm not really sure exactly how many yards, but you would probably need four skeins of yarn in order to make this. Each skein would have to be at least 250 yards. And this is a worsted weight. I enjoyed it. I made it with a J hook. It didn't take all that terribly long once I started working on it. And one thing I wanted to show you about this, this is a uh, beautiful neckline. I like this neckline. See how it goes down? And it hugs the neck up here, but it does dip down enough to make it look like a summer sweater. And it's not immodest, but it is a beautiful neckline. I like the way it turned out. And then as a design element to pull this whole sweater together, I used a ribbing technique around the neck, and I ribbed around the bottom of the sleeves as well, and also at the bottom of the sweater. So there's a wide rib at the bottom of the sweater, and then a very small rib right here. It's just two rows, but it's beautiful around the neck, and the back of the neck did not need any short rows. It came up just high enough, and then when I added the rib on, it was nice and tall up here in the back, so it gave the sweater a nice look. It is not dipped down in the back, although if you're creative, you can do that if you want to, but I did not make this sweater that way. And then I actually sewed the sweater together, and then I crocheted the sleeves on in a circular uh, row fashion this way. And then I added the, the ribbing at the bottom, and then a final a little row here of single, single crochet. And around the neck and around the bottom are all single crochet along the edge there. So um, they, they blend in very well. I made it out of a solid color. And I do like the solid color look, but you could certainly make this from any kind of yarn you want. Anything, anything you buy at the store, anything you buy online, you could make this sweater very easily because, as you know, all my patterns are conversational style. They're easy to understand. They are made to fit you. They are not sized. There are no stitch counts. I give a suggested number, but you can use more or less, and it doesn't affect the look of the pattern at all. And the final result, I hope that yours would look just like this. This is a beautiful uh, summer sweater. It's not for winter time. It's not really for fall, although the sleeves do come down almost to my elbow. They are fairly long, um, but they're not elbow length. They're above the elbow, and I could have easily added some rows here. 
after I decreased along here and, and made the, the sleeve fit a little bit better, then I would uh, just add some rows here and I could make it longer, but it was long enough for me. So that's how I construct this sweater. It's all basically double crochet, the whole thing. So if you can do a double crochet and you can decrease, which is extremely simple, and I show you in the pattern how to do that. Um, that's very easy to do as well. So this is my sparkling, my sparkling summer sweater. Almost, that's a tongue tie, a tongue twister. This is the sparkling summer sweater, and the pattern will be out next week. And all of you who are in the community will receive an email to let you know that the pattern is ready and that you have a substantial discount. And I'll give you the offer code on that email, and you can go to my. Um, Etsy shop and purchase the pattern if you want to. The off code is always good on all my patterns. I sometimes see girls who buy, or men, I don't know who's buying, <laughs> buying four or five patterns at a time. It's because you have that great discount and you can get them for very little and they're, most of them are between 10 and 20 pages because I try to explain everything at least twice. So that'll be coming out next week, so look for that. Now, what I'm wearing, what I'm wearing today, I'm wearing a Busy Bee top, but it's made a little bit different from the Busy Bee, but I, I made it out of the same Cotton Fair yarn. Now, I don't know if they still make this or not, but a multicolored Cotton Fair yarn is hard to come by. I have only seen one or two different patterns and this is one that I really like this is sort of like the busy bee the busy bee is yellow black and white this is yellow green and orange and white yellow green orange and white it has four colors and I when I saw this my friend Joe who is uh, who created the video you'll be seeing later she had this cotton fair one day long time ago maybe two years ago I was at a little get together, a crochet get together, and Joe had this, and she had started to make a sweater. And I said, I love that, love that. What is that? And I found out, and I ordered, I think three or four balls of it, and I made a sweater from it. And it is so comfortable, as you know. Cotton Fair is one of my favorite yarns to use. It is very, very comfortable uh, in the summertime. This is an awesome top. And now, I usually don't wear a tank under it, but today it was kind of cool. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to go to the grocery store where it's cold in there in the freezing section. I call it the freezing section. <laughs> it's the freezer section. And I can go in there and be comfortable if I have a tank top. So I'm wearing a white tank top under this. But I'll stand up and show it to you. This is the, uh, again, the Busy Bee top. And it's made almost like the, the pattern. I think I don't... Um, roll up the sleeves on this one. I put a little bit longer trim on this one, about this far, and the Busy Bee, I just continued with the stitching until the very bottom, and then I added some, and then I flipped it up into a little cuff on the pattern. You can see that, but instead of that for this, I just stopped a little bit early, and I made several rows of finishing single crochets there. Looks like single crochets, yeah. I think they're single crochet. And then I made a very wide band around the neck. And you can do that on any of my patterns. If you like the wide neck and the single crochet style, you can decrease, usually decrease here and here to keep this tight against your chest, here and here, sometimes in the middle, on the shoulders, and then at least once along the back. And if you find that there's a gap, if it's gapping after you try it on after a row or two, you can go back and decrease the next row wherever it's gapping. Just to, just put a decrease in that one spot and you'll find that your necks, uh, your necklines and your sleeve fittings are so much better. They, they hug your arm and they don't stand out like that. You don't want them to stand out. You want them to fit you. And that's how my patterns are. They are designed for you to fit yourself and then, then when you finish your sweater, it will fit you just perfectly today, not next month, not last year when you were smaller, but it'll fit you today, the size that you are today. Next week, I have lots of things that I want to talk about. <laughs> I might have to do more than one video next week, but I also was suggested to buy a prim 
crochet hook and several of my subscribers have suggested that I try the prim crochet hooks and they came and they were waiting for me when I got here on Wednesday but I just now have opened them and the box took a little bit of a beating outside it was um, this is what it looked like when it came it was inside a bubble wrap but it was just the the hooks were all on one side <laughs> They had been thrown back and forth, and it had rained on the package. Of course, rain won't hurt anything um, that's made from uh, rubber and plastic. It won't hurt anything, so that's not an issue at all. But I did receive these. I received five prim hooks, and I'm going to try these and do a review of these hooks. But I wanted to let you know that they did come in, and I'm just really excited about trying them out. Now one thing I did notice that the letter size is not on here. The millimeter size, like this is a 3.5 millimeter hook and that's what it looks like. It's very pretty. Let me put these down. This is very pretty. It has uh, a design on it and the shaft of the hook is very, very long. The shafts on these hooks are very long. Look at this, how long. Let me put my hand back here. The shaft of the hook is very long. That's the white part right there that starts right there. And the hook is at the end of the shaft. And these are so long compared to a clover hook. If you look at that, say these are the same size. Look at the difference in the shaft size. This one goes here, the clover stops right here. So that will be interesting to try. I'm excited. I'll probably do a video with the prim hooks alone and maybe compare them to the clover because the clover hooks are my very, very favorite. And y'all, if you know me, you know that I only use clover hooks. But because there's a new uh, crochet hook on the market and I was told I should try it, I decided I would just order the sizes I use most for the most part. This goes up to a J hook and um, that is what I usually use. I usually use a J hook. Now, wait a minute. I'm not sure about that. Yes, there's the J hook. This is the J hook. It's green. And I'm going to be using this on my next project. And I'd like to try it out and see if it works all right for me. So, anyway, I wanted to let you know that I had these and I was going to take a look at them. Now, if y'all don't already know Joe, she is the project bag maker extraordinaire. I mean, <laughs> she makes the most beautiful project bags. I have many of her project bags here and I use them every single day and I'm always moving things in and out of them because I don't have enough of her bags. I still want to get many more, but I, I, I don't have any more room on the floor for them, honestly. I'm really covered up here, but um, y'all have seen me show her bags before, but she has some bags now that she started uh, this week and finished and she's going to be shipping them out so I'm going to play her video right here and you can learn about her bags on this video and then I'll be right back afterward and we'll chit chat for a second and then I'll say goodbye. Hi there it's Joe with Joe for Totes I hope you're doing good. I have a bag to show you today and I'm going to try to connect this video with another one I'm going to be doing later next week and so you'll see several at the same time. But today I'll show you this bag that goes to Mary Beth, who lives in Wells, Wisconsin. And she had seen a Southwest bag that I did for somebody else last year, I believe is when I did it. And she wanted a duplicate. Of course, there are differences on this bag. Um, this medallion is a little different, as they all are. But the main fabric is the same. The outside pocket is a little different. Uh, the back shows all of the um, the southwestern fabric, which is so pretty. It's so pretty. Uh, I love these blues, these turquoise. This is her little zipper pull that I made for her. And her handles have this little zigzag stitch that's kind of a western looking motif. And then the bottom is this brown, looks kind of like leather as the straps do. And then on the inside, I'll show you this. Um, she has, she asked for a little notion bag. So this is her little notions bag and that's the little pull I put on that, little charm pull. On the inside she has this same brown fabric that 
is on the inside of the bag and I'll show you that uh, in these pockets there's two on the inside one is completely um, open across and the other one has a divider in it that I sewed and then um, she has her tab here with her stitch markers on it and um, Oh, and she has one side pocket. She wanted one side pocket, probably for a water bottle, if I had to guess. So this one goes to Mary Beth, and she's waited a long time for it. So I hope she thinks it's worth it. I thought it just came out so pretty. The binding, I think, matched up really well. And um, the front of it certainly is so pretty. It's just very nice. And then the matching uh, little Notion bag goes very well with it. I got it going in the opposite direction, but I think it's nice to kind of have a little bit of difference in a bag. So, um, and the next time I see you, I'll be showing you some um, very interesting bags. And one of them, or two of them are gonna be different from what I've ever made before. And I'm getting ready to make a practice one right now because I've not done one like this before, but I love to do new things and love challenges. So I'm hoping those will turn out. Hi, it's Joe again. And I'm hoping to connect this video with the one that I did uh, previous to this one. But I have two bags to show you on this video. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first one goes to um, Kathy, and she is from Carlsbad, California. Kathy sent me this fabric, and it is so pretty. I've not, um, this is the one I'm going to show you that I've not done something like this before, but obviously I've made bags like this before, so this is not it. <laughs> but she sent me this butterfly fabric with the black background. Is that not beautiful? I just think it's so pretty. These are gold print and um, it just sets the bag off so pretty with all these different colors. And so she picked this color that goes with a lot of the colors in the butterfly and then this kind of stained glass fabric. And she wanted both of her side pockets to be out of each one of these coordinating fabrics. And I thought that just looked so pretty together. This is her medallion, which I think turned out very nice, very pretty, coordinates with those um, chartreuse colors and the turquoise colors, which I've never really paired before, but I thought it just did amazingly pretty. Um, this is, she has a zipper top, and so this is her pull tab on her zipper, and I happen to have a little butterfly um, that I've had for a long, long time, so I incorporated that into this zipper pull, and then the orange that matches the orange in this. Um, her handles have a little multicolored a stitch on it, stitch pattern on it that matches all these colors in the front of the bag. The bottom, of course, is black as are the handles. And on the inside, she has a clear vinyl pocket that she can put um, just anything in and see right through it, which is a real handy feature to have. And then, of course, her stitch markers. And on the other side, she asked me to put a zipper pocket. And then she asked for two um, hooks on either side of the zipper pocket, which I couldn't really figure out how to do that other than just put two separate sleeves on below the zipper so but it'll be functional she'll she'll find that that works very well the inside has a turquoise fabric with a chartreuse zipper and then of course again i had to put a little beadwork on that zipper pull um, as i did the outside of the bag and the zipper pull that i put on that one so with this um bag she also asked for two coordinating pouches and she sent me plenty of fabric plus I'll be sending her some fabric back um, oh on the inside of this front pocket I put this coordinating fabric and I just thought that looked so pretty there so these are the pouches that I've not made before the first one is a little larger than the second one but they're both made with a clear window so you can see right through she wanted one out of the stripe with the inside being the stained glass and the other the opposite so um, they just turned out so cute, I thought. Um, I had to do a test one to make sure that I could make them. And they, they're a little bit more labor intensive than just the, the solid fabric pouches uh, because of all the piecing together. But And the inside is uh, has a lot of raw edges, so I had to use my serger to finish off the inside of the bags. But still, in all in all, they just turned out very nice, and I think she'll be very satisfied with um, the look and the functionality of being able to see what she has in those pouches. So very cute, very good idea. Now the second one goes to uh, Teresa who lives in Zephyr Hills, Florida. And 
first when Teresa sent me a request, she wanted camper fabric. Well, this quickly changed. <laughs> no, well, not quickly, but <laughs> she changed it to a wine motif. And so she sent me um, these two fabrics and, and they're just slightly different, but different enough to where you can see the difference. This is her medallion. I'll show you that up close. And then the only coordinating fabric that I added was this kind of a wine colored with some orange that goes with the orange or kind of the rust color in this bottom fabric. Uh, she wanted two side pockets, so they're made out of the uh, same fabric as the front pocket with uh, the, that same coordinating fabric on the, um, on the inside of those side pouches. She wanted a back zipper, so I put the coordinating fabric in there, and then this is her uh, little zipper pull with the coordinating uh, colors and those beads. I just thought that turned out so pretty. And then her uh, handles have a little green, it almost looks like a grape leaf motif sewn onto it. Uh, the bottom is black. Excuse me, I keep bumping my computer. And then on the inside, she wanted a zipper compartment, uh, which I put the coordinating fabric on, and then another little pull um, thing. Sorry about that again. And her stitch markers. And then for the top, she just wanted a snap closure, which makes it very easy access to get in and out of this bag. So, um, so this one goes to Teresa, and these will go in the mail today, and I hope they really enjoy them. So until next time, this is Joe with Joe for Totes. Bye. Thank you, Joe. That was great. I always like having your videos on my video. I did put it at the end, though, in case I had a crazy audio problem. And if I'm doing this and I'm uh, my voice is behind my physical appearance, then I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know how to fix it. So next week, I will be doing a knit crate opening for August. I will be giving away the Crochet World and the Crochet Surprise gifts for next Monday. So be sure you sign up for those. And the videos will be in the one side or the other as I finish out my video today you will see those links and just click on those and that will take you to the video where you can sign up for one of these gifts if you haven't already so done I hope so. you have a wonderful wonderful weekend I plan to do so and I will see you back here on Labor Day on Monday and join me then to find out what's on the hook <laughs>